Good morning. Today's <clears throat> Tuesday the 19th of January in the second week of the church's year. It's a feria but with memorial of St. Walston. Name the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God who governs all things both in heaven and on earth mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading is for continuing Hebrews. We're in chapter 6, verses 10 to 20, and an extract. Here we have an account for our soul, as sure as it is firm, and reaching right through beyond the veil, where Jesus has entered before us and on our behalf to become a high priest of the order of Melchizedek and forever. The Gospel of the, the Word of the Lord. The Gospel continues in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, 23 to 28. One Sabbath day, Jesus happened to be taking a walk through the cornfields and his disciples began to pick ears of corn as they went along. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing something on the Sabbath day that's forbidden? And he replied, Did you never read what David did in his time of need, when he and his followers were hungry? How he went into the house of God, when Abiathar was high priest, and ate the loaves of offering, which only the priests are allowed to eat, and how he also gave some to the men with him. And Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, and the Son of Man is master even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. So we continue the themes. First of all, in Hebrews, we're called continually to persevere, and we're given a reason this time that Jesus' promises of the high priest as the high priest are always made by the power of God, not by something lesser. And therefore we can completely trust the promises of Jesus. And then he uses this wonderful symbolism of Jesus as the anchor, something you can hold on to and which will hold firm, even during a storm. All of us have storms in our lives, none of us are storm-free. And the idea that we have an anchor that we can hold on to no matter what, is what's being put forward to us as part of our, our journey so that we may persevere. In the Gospel, we hear of the story of the, uh, Jesus and the Apostles picking corn as they went through the cornfields on the Sabbath, the complaint of the scribes, and then Jesus overruling the law, saying man is the master of the law, not a servant of it. And then this claim, the Son of Man, exact words, the Son of Man is master even of the Sabbath. And this is clearly a claim to Jesus' status as the Son of God. Again, the anchor we can hold on to. The memorial today is St. Walston. Um, he was a Benedictine monk during the turbulent times of 1008 to 1095 so before and after the Norman invasion, but he was regarded as a safe pair of hands and uh, he was Bishop of Worcester and made it a very powerful diocese. He reformed it and travelled to make sure that all the monasteries, all the parishes were observing the, the right laws and principles uh, of a good Catholic parish and uh, a faithful Benedictine monastery. There's a story about him which is interesting. He was saying Mass and nearby uh, a kitchen was cooking a goose and the lovely odours of the cooking goose came to him and distracted him during Mass. And he prayed that he wouldn't be distracted and said if he could carry on the Mass without distraction he would promise never to eat meat again. Uh, which he did. Uh, he became a, a vegetarian after that. <clears throat> but it's a, it's a story that perhaps shouldn't be followed too closely because 
it's implying that some of the good things of life, like roasting goose, are, are wrong or evil in some way. It's rather, they should be kept in proportion. Um, the adverts will say things like naughty but nice or wickedly delicious, as if very tasty things are bad in some way. They're not. They're all part of God's good creation. But it's our role to manage our, our diet, our intake of food, our intake of our control of our self-control, in other words, so that all the good things, we don't ruin them by overindulgence in them. And so it's a, it's a sign for us to both appreciate the wonderful flavours and good food that is around us, especially if we've got it, to say thank God for it, but equally not to think of it as evil. Think of it rather as something we must use with control, and that's back to our own prayer and penitence. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, lead us to the truth. Let us bless our Saviour, who by his rising to new life has freed the world from fear. Lord, lead us to the truth. Lord Jesus, as this day begins, we remember that you are risen, and therefore we look to the future with confidence. Lord, lead us to the truth. We offer you our prayer this morning. <clears throat> Take to yourself our cares, our hopes and our needs. Lord, lead us to the truth. Deepen in us our love for you today, so that in all things we may find our good and the good of others. Lord, lead us to the truth. Lord Jesus, we pray that through our own troubles we may learn to feel the sufferings of others. Help us to show them your compassion. Lord, lead us to the truth. And the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. True light of the world, Lord Jesus Christ, as you enlighten all of us for our salvation, give us grace, we pray, to herald your coming by preparing the ways of justice and of peace. We live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Have a good day. All the best.